Good, happy Thursday morning. I'm Riley King, and welcome to your news and weather update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. Let's get started. First up, Three Alarm Blaze destroys church in Lebanon. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. We are right, we are right here, here on School, school Street, Street, right just, right, feet, just away feet away from, from the first Baptist, Baptist church. church. And as you can see, crews continue to work at this hour. The church is badly burned, but it is still standing. We spoke to the chief a short time ago, and here's what we know right now. A 911 call was made around 1120 last night for smoke in the area. When firefighters arrived, they spotted the fire coming from the back of the church. Roughly eight towns responded to this third alarm fire. A couple of our viewers sent in video from overnight where you can see how intense the flames were. The fire chief tells us that the church is a total loss. Thankfully, no one was inside at the time. One firefighter did, however, suffer an injury to his shoulder. Right now, we're, we're under control. We still have some, hidden, some, some drop down fire and some fire that we're having a hard time getting to because of the roof collapse. We have some concerns about the structural integrity of the steeple. Um, so we're kind of using a lot of caution around what we're doing right now, but largely we're under control, but we'll be here pretty much through the day uh, 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 with overall. Again, you are taking a live look here on School Street as crews continue to work on this fire. No word on a cause at this time because firefighters cannot get inside just yet. We're live in Lebanon this morning. Kristen Carosa, WNUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Police search for Franklin man considered armed and dangerous. Let's take a listen to the video from WMUR News 9. We're reaching out uh, a hand and saying, we'll meet you halfway, but you got to come that half yourself, so, or else we'll find him anyway. Dozens of law enforcement officials are looking for Ryan Bruyard. He's accused of taking part in some sort of altercation at a home on Pleasant and Prospect Streets and was allegedly armed when confronted by police. Tabitha Van Polen was inside that same house where it all took place. He hit my friend with a gun in the head twice. And then, um, we, so we sat into the living room. He went back into the other, oh, he told us we were all going to die. He said, you're all going to die tonight. Van Polen says she jumped out of a second story window, drove away and called police. Nearby residents were ordered to shelter in their homes. Others were evacuated. Chief Goldstein says at one point, police dogs tracked Briard's scent to the nearby river trail, but eventually lost it. It's not far from where Wendy Jackson made a frightening discovery saw that somebody had obviously tried to start the what we call the plow truck and it didn't start and we saw footprints that were running across the pasture. She flagged down police and says officers were on their property for hours. They had um, the rifles drawn and they were all over the property and it was pretty intimidating. <laughs> Chief Goldstein says Bruyard is familiar with officers in this area, multiple felonies on his record, prison time, and he's currently on parole. I didn't know until after the fact that it was a 250-pound guy um, armed out there. I had no idea, and I realized that I'm like right next to his footprints. Kind of scary. And now Bruyard is described as about six feet, six inches tall, 250 pounds with brown hair and green eyes. Police are urging anyone who may see him to stay away and call them immediately. Live in Franklin tonight, I'm Sharice LeClaire, WMUR News 9. Okay, and there you go on that report. Debbie Reynolds, Hollywood legend and mother of Carrie Fisher, dies at 84. Debbie Reynolds, the legend... Dairy Hollywood entertainer and mother of Carrie Fisher died Wednesday. Reynolds' son, Todd Fisher, has confirmed to ABC News Reynolds was 84. Apple dominates Samsung in Hollywood holiday gadget shopping while Google struggled to exceed. Apple and Samsung dominated Christmas wishes lists this year, but both had a luckier holiday season, according to a new study.
Kim Jong-un has executed over 300 people since coming to power. Let's take a listen to this video from CNN. A reminder that no one is safe in North Korea. The regime of Kim Jong-un executing yet another member of the elite. Kim Yong-jin, a top education official, was executed by firing squad in July, according to South Korea's Unification Ministry. Accused of having a bad attitude at the key Supreme People's Assembly in June, investigated by the State Security Department and found to be anti-party and counter-revolutionary. Seoul saying Wednesday they also believe two other high-ranking officials have been reprimanded. This man, Kim Yong-chol, in charge of the department that handles inter-Korean affairs. A South Korean government official tells us he's accused of abusing power and being overbearing. He was apparently sent to a farm for re-education for one month. An official from the propaganda department also sent away from Pyongyang since late May. It's not an exact science. South Korean officials have been wrong about executions in the past. Information from the isolated country is scarce, and North Korea almost never publicly acknowledges them. One notable exception, December 2013, and the execution of Kim Jong-un's uncle, Chan son Tech, publicly accused of being a traitor of all ages. South Korean and U.S. officials say they consider Kim Jong-un to be more brutal and impulsive than his father, the late Kim Jong-il. His willingness to execute, breeding loyalty through fear, according to defectors. A government think tank here in South Korea estimates that more than 100 officials have been executed since Kim Jong-un took power less than four and a half years ago. Rank, even family connection, meaning little to the North Korean leader. Paula Hancock's CNN Seoul. Okay, and there you go on that report. Now time for your weather. Your weather for today, snow developing around midday, heavy at times, late in the day. Snow could mix with rain at times, highs in the mid-30s. For tonight, windy with a mixture of rain and snow in the evening, then back to snow overnight, lows near the 30s. And that does it for your news and weather update right here on the Riley King Radio Network. I hope you all have a great day rest of your Thursday and a great rest of your day. Goodbye everyone.